Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today I'm going to show you how to put a checkbox in the header or footer of a continuous form. And then you can use that checkbox to check all of the other boxes on or off, like a select all, right? Hey, select all. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in today's video. Now, today is part 53 of my fitness database, but this tip works in pretty much any database that you've got. You don't have to necessarily follow along with my fitness database, but if you want to learn some really cool tricks, I've shown lots of them. We're on part 53, so there's lots of other videos, lots of cool tricks. Doesn't matter if you want to count calories or all that stuff. The point is, is we're making a really cool database. We are going to go over a couple of bug fixes from the last couple lessons in here today but we'll get to this very soon. So here we go. First up today, we've got a bug report by one of my silver members and 15 year member, Len. Len said, if you delete an item from the bottom line, while the line still has focus, you can check the box. How can we set the focus back to its normal position? And then of course, Kevin jumped right on it with a fix. You just gotta say has eaten dot locked equals true in the delete button code. So let's go do that real quick. All right, what they're talking about is right now, if I put an item in here, okay, since I'm doing that, this is unlocked, right? If I delete the item, there's nothing in that delete code that says to relock this guy. And so it's still unlocked. Good catch, Len, really good catch. So all we have to really basically do is when we delete an item in here, right? This is the code that runs when we delete it. We'll just say here has eaten dot locked equals true. And that'll fix it. Debug compile and let's give it a test. I always like to test stuff no matter how simple it is because sometimes you get really weird stuff in there. All right, delete that item and now it's back to being locked. Okay, okay, we can still check the others. Although I did just think of another situation. What happens if you're deleting something up here, not necessarily the last record? For example, I set this to 10 o'clock, right? I put something in here. Okay, if I delete it, uh, if I requery, okay, then that puts the 10 o'clock item here now. So if I delete it at this point, I'm no longer sitting on a new record. So I think what we should have, see, it's still, it's locked now and it won't unlock until you move off of it. So I think what we should do in that code, instead of just that, Kevin, I think we should say right here, if me dot new record, then lock it, right? If you're at the end, lock it. If not, leave it unlocked. So again, it should work fine at the bottom, right? Delete and we cannot lock, we cannot edit it. But if I put something in here and then requery it so that it's up a little higher, like there, if I delete it now, I'm still able to do it. Okay, so that's perfect. Kevin, your solution was great. Just had to add a little tiny bit there. I had to just think about that for a second. I'm like, wait a minute. What if we go up here and delete something? Okay, all right, moving on. Next up, we did a whole bunch of stuff, cool stuff last time with the shift click, right? Um, this time what I'd like to do, oh, by the way, I tried some of these Beyond Steak Tips for dinner. I was not impressed. I figured they're, they're healthy. They have a lot of protein, but... Just if you're looking for a steak taste, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I really, really, really want to like that Beyond stuff because, I, I mean, I am a carnivore, but you know, if we could eventually switch everybody over to plant-based sources and not have to kill animals, I'm all for that from a, a moral standpoint, but I just I like the taste of meat. I'm sorry. Anyways, <laughs> I want to make a box up here that if we check that box, it'll check or uncheck the whole column, right? Like a select all kind of thing. We talked about this last time. All right, so let's do that. Let's copy one of these boxes here. Just copy, let's see if it'll work this time. Copy, paste, okay, there we go. Copy, click up top, paste. That seems to work okay. Line it up right over the top of the other one. And let's uh, open her up. And let's call this guy uh, has eaten all. All right, let's go to all here. So the name of it will be has eaten 
all. Now get rid of the control source, right? Because we don't want it bound to anything. Um, we don't want it saving its value somewhere, but when it's updated, we got to do some stuff. All right, so let's go to after update dot dot dot. Sounds like a little uh, like a dance after update dot dot dot. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not starting something stupid. <laughs> All right, so here's what I want to do. When this box is checked, I want to set all of the boxes on this day, all the records on this day equal to whatever this box's value is. So if I check it on, I want to set the whole day to on. If I check it off, I want to set the whole day equal to off. So we could do this with a single SQL statement. And see, this is where it's important to learn SQL because uh, when I first started using Access, I didn't know SQL. I would have thought to do this with a loop, right? You start with the first record, you loop through to the last record with a record set loop. But this can be handled with one single line of SQL. So current db.execute update. We're doing an update query, right? Food log t set has eaten equals whatever the value of that has eaten all box is. Has eaten all. all right, and that should capitalize when I'm done. And put a space there. And let's go to the next line. Where, we need our where condition, food date time is greater than or equal to whatever the log date is. That's that date up top, right? And food date time is less than uh, log date plus one, tomorrow's date. All right, enter. That's gonna check them all. Now, checks them all in the background. Whenever you do something like this, you're modifying, oh, that's it, let me real quick. I keep forgetting sometimes when you're inside of a string, that stuff doesn't auto-correct. All right, anyways, like I was saying, so when you execute this SQL statement, it's going to update those records in the background, but the form doesn't know about it until you requery the form. Not recalc, requery. Right, and then just give them a beep for whatever. All right, save it. Debug, compile once in a while. Let's close it, close it, close it, open it. And let's uncheck everything. Oh, okay, so it started off as null because we, for some reason it's got, let's see, probably has null as the data default value. Yeah, see if you don't put anything in here, it starts off as null and the first time you check it, it's going to be checked. So let's make the default value no and make sure it's not a triple state box. Sometimes I do use the triple state box for doing filter boxes because you can have yes, no, and null, which basically is show me both of them, for example. You got to program that yourself, though. I got lots of videos on that. All right, let's try it again. All right, it starts off as no. So check it on. Everybody goes yes. Check it off. Everybody goes no. Check it on. Check it off. Check it on. Check it off. Curly, straight. Cur <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so there we go. That's that. There was another bug I alluded to a little while back. Um, that is if we, okay, so we have that one second thing in here, right? So if we look at this, if these log items, I put all these in a little while ago, 9.40 p.m. when I had my dinner. So um, if you look in the log table, they all have that one second increment, right? And pretty soon we're gonna split this database so I don't have to keep using my actual data. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, and five, and so on. But that doesn't happen if you type in something manually. All right, if I just come in here and type in 9.40 p.m. stuff, right? And then let's do another one. 9.40 p.m. more, ah, more stuff. Okay, if I look at the log table now, you'll see that it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do that. So we need a little, a little short fix, real easy. Um, for the, um, the food time text before update, this guy, all right, open her up because this fire is when the user puts a time in here manually and that's where we have to, to do it. So here's the before update right there. It's the food time text before update. All right. And right down here. All right, we got D. D is C date of food time text. In other words, C is the date value, the date version of food time text. So they type in 9.30 p.m. It's exactly 9.30. Okay, 
And right down here, we're setting it in the table. So all we need to do here is run that D through our foods, uh, safe food date time formula. And we have to do it down here and we have to do it twice. We can't just do it here because at this point, it only has a time component. So it doesn't have a date on it. So down here is where we add the date to it, right? If it's less than, or if it's greater than one, it adds the date. If not, it's just a time and then we add the log date time. So we have to put it down here and do it twice. So it's safe food date time of D. So it takes that value. And down here, it's going to be, actually we could do it just once at the bottom after this, because both of these are gonna drop down to here. So we could, but then that's taking two lines and making it three instead of just adding a little bit of code up here. So that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with either way. Okay, all right. Save that, debug, compile. Let's give her a test. Let's delete the two records that were bad. All right, get over here. Where are you? Oh, where are you? There you are. Wait, no, there it is. It's up here. See, it's, it, it's sorted up here now because it's exactly equal with this one. So delete and then delete. Okay, so let's add another 940. And, oh, AM. Yeah. That's another thing we're going to fix, by the way. Well, that wouldn't change. I wanna add something that, that takes your waking hours into consideration. For example, I almost never eat anything at 4 a.m. So if I type in four or four o'clock, I want it to default to p.m. and not a.m. Nine on the other hand, yeah, sometimes I'll eat it, something, obviously at breakfast at 9.40 a.m., but I would also sometimes eat at 9.40 p.m. too. I have my evening snack usually between 10 and 11-ish. Anyways, that's gonna be, that's on my list. I got a gigantic list of stuff we're still gonna do. Um, okay, so 9.40 p.m. stuff, and if we did this right, if I re-query, it should go right in there, yep, and it did, and I can tell it's working because it's after all the other ones. And if you look in the log table, it's going to be right down here with seven seconds after it. There's stuff. Beautiful. That's another fix. A lot of, a lot of little bug fixes. Well, we got one new thing, right? The new thing was the, the eaten box, but couple little bug fixes there. So that's going to do it for your part 53, folks. Uh, members, stick around. We are going to do an extended cut today. Um, got some random members-only stuff, to some bug fixes that I've been saving up for the past couple videos uh, on stuff that is in members-only parts. Not a, not a ton of stuff, but we'll get to it. But for everybody else, that's it for your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there, just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, 
and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.